Hello folks, my name is Doctor, or well, I guess that's what my channel used to be called. And uh, I have this potion brewing system for you. Uh, in the back, you can see it. I'm gonna do a rundown of how it works, why it was designed this way, what its advantages are. And if you wanna skip on ahead, there is a link to the, well, a timestamp to the tutorial that you can also check out if you wish so. Although I would recommend listening to the introduction. So why did I design this? Basically, um, the whole design is a combination of various concepts that exist within Redstone. Uh, I'm not the most creative or innovative Redstoner, uh, but I just wasn't quite content with the potion brewing stations that you can find online. There are crazy giant ones that'll brew like 27 potions at a time. I think you'll agree that most people don't need that for a single player world or a small server. There are designs that will brew a single type of potion, which is just not very convenient if you want something else. There are the designs that require a lot of user input, such as pressing a button for each single ingredient each time you wanna brew a set of three potions, um, which certainly has a place. It's quite useful, quite easy to build, but a bit tedious if you wanna brew a lot of potions. So I tried to counteract that. Um, I've built in a item sorting system as well with a item elevator over there. So you don't need to put in items into the right box. Uh, you can adapt the system to your needs. You can leave out any of these slices. Uh, you can obviously leave the item filter away as well. Uh, so you got a lot of choices that you can um, choose, I guess, with this build. Uh, you can also choose different modes of brewing. So as you can see here, I selected a type of potion that's gonna be the night vision potion with I'm not gonna do extended duration because it takes longer to brew, but you could obviously select that. And uh, I can just press the button and it's gonna do some stuff. You may have heard three clicks. That is the auto water bottle filler here. Um, the auto water bottle filler is very useful because water bottles don't stack, but glass bottles do. So what this does is with each cycle, with each set of three, it's gonna fill three bottles. So well, as long as you keep this chest full, you're never gonna run out of bottles and you don't have to do the manual refill all the time. And like every single other item, you can just use the item filter to um, add more of the glass bottles in. We have our output here, as you can see, I've been doing some brewing. Um, and as we're brewing right now, we can take a look. So our aqua potion has already been infused with nether wart and next up is gonna be golden carrot coming in. That's automatically gonna be removed. And since we press the button, it doesn't continue brewing. But we can of course flick the lever and that's gonna start the whole thing again. Once it's brewing, it actually can't be interrupted by you know pressing the button and uh, adding more items to it, which could break it. So it's quite foolproof. As long as you leave a bit of time between the inputs, nothing can happen. Uh, what we can do now is as it is brewing the first set, we can also adjust our recipe. Let's say we want, for example, fire resistance next. It's just gonna have to finish what it is brewing currently. Uh, as you can see, that's happening right now. And then once that is done, it'll start brewing fire resistance. Uh, so you can adjust on the go as you are brewing, very flexible, very easy to use. Um, whilst that's brewing, let's quickly talk about the dimensions. So the whole build is five blocks wide. It is 10 blocks high, not including this optional line of composters. That would be 11 blocks. And the full configuration is 24 blocks. Obviously this might grow as I believe there are new potions about to be introduced to the game, but you can also make it smaller. I'm gonna look at that in a second, uh, but for now, as you can see, the next set of potions is brewing and now we have our magma cream and the potion of night vision is done. And then if I say that's enough, I can just turn it off. It's gonna finish brewing. During that time, this button, I mean, it lights up the lamp and you might've heard a, a piston, but it will not actually break anything if you press the button now. It will only take in a new input once it is completely done with the potions that it's brewing. So let's talk about the variations. So as I said, I believe I said at least the system's quite modular. You don't have to build all of these slices. Uh, if you wanna just have four, you can do that. You can do less, of course, uh, but if you do four, you can still fit the item elevator. I will say that the item elevator is definitely a bit janky. The reason why it is, is because I just wanted to fit it within the uh, limitations of the footprint. So that's why it's kind of uh, tight here. 
you could definitely build something else like a water elevator. As a matter of fact, I would recommend building something else. But it works, it's reliable, makes a little bit of clicking noise at the start and at the end of bringing the items up, but it does definitely work reliably. And uh, we also have mod, uh, the options for different outputs. So here we have a barrel in the front. We also have the chest that I showed you here that is in the back if you want to hook it up to an elevator with, I don't know, a big tower of chests, then you can do that. And what we also can do is leave away the item sorting system that's going to make it a bit less intense on the iron. So you definitely save some resources and you can always add that later on. So in the tutorial, if you don't want to do the item sorting, just leave it away, it can always be added at a later point. This one also has a different control panel here. Um, that is just an option I wanted to present. The reason why it is not part of the showcase is because technically this is six blocks wide due to the levers and the item frame. I guess that item frame is as well, but you know, you can just leave it away. So this one works just the same, a lever selects, but I think it looks a bit better because the item frame is not on the glowstone lamp. I will show you how to build this slice and I will show you how to build the basic one over there in the tutorial. So the last thing I might wanna show quickly is the item sorting itself. So it comes with a full item sorter, including turtle shells. So I'm just gonna take these out quickly the gunpowder and you can see now the lights are off. Um, so what I can do is just come over here and drop in my gunpowder and drop in a few turtle shells. It's going to start doing something. You might hear some clicking, but once it's stopped the initial clicking, it's actually super reliable and silent. Uh, it'll then bring the items up. As you can see, gunpowder lit up. Uh, this one will take a little bit longer because it's all the way at the end. But once you see that something's happening there, we also have our turtle shell that is now once again available. So we have full uh, control, you have full uh, information about what is currently um, available in the storage of the system, can store quite a few items as well. So again, a lot of flexibility. That should be it though for the features. So we're gonna get to the block by block tutorial, good old block by block tutorial. Uh, stay tuned and I'll show you the resources you need and how you build all the modules so that you can do this in your survival world. All right, so let's get to the resources needed. Uh, I've got a list here in my chest. Obviously these colored wool blocks can be anything of your choice as long as it's a solid block. Uh, not all of them need to be solid, but I would just recommend keeping it easy and using solid ones. Uh, the decorative blocks are also up to you. I don't have the exact amounts. That really depends on how you want to decorate your farm. Also, if you're going to build a smaller version, you need less. If you're going to build a version without the sorting system, you're going to need a lot less hoppers and less of some other stuff. So uh, keep that in mind. Otherwise, it's for the full design. Uh, you can still see the light medica thingy I have there. And we're going to start building on the most important piece, the heart of the system, which is the yellow circuit, the brewing. So um, you can choose between two outputs. We have the one in the back that I showed you and we have the one in the front uh, that will be that barrel. However, I'm gonna start with this one and we'll show you how to do the other one next. So what you wanna do is add four hoppers in an L shape like this with a fifth one on top. So we are one, two, three, four blocks off and then add the brewing stand on top of that with a hopper on top, one in the front and one in the back. Next up, we need to add a block here and we need to add a temporary block here with some hoppers facing into each other. Now here we wanna add 53 of any item that is stackable. It's gonna start doing some things, but that'll be fixed soon enough. We add a comparator there. This block can obviously go again. And then we need to add the blocks in this shape as I added here, once again, a comparator, redstone dust with a torch on this side, then a block here, a block here with a repeater. This one has to be on maximum delay, four ticks. And on the bottom here, we need another torch as well as on the other side. And that is already the centerpiece of the whole thing done. Uh, I guess you can add a double chest here and a double chest here. So this one is for water bottles can add some in there. And this one is for blaze powder. Uh, that should probably last for a while. Uh, as you can see, the blaze powder is already filling. The water bottles are not currently. That is blocked, uh, but will open once we start brewing. And if you want to test to see if everything went right, you can add a uh, nether wart and another ingredient here. 
and it should start brewing. We have the nether wart in there, the golden carrot there. Uh, this stuff is going to start moving. And if we do a tick sprint 100, then you can see it's going to give us our potions. So that is the first part done. And I will continue with the next thing, which is going to be the control panel in the front here. Okay, now up next is going to be the controlling circuit. Uh, for that one, we're going to start with a slab here in front of this torch with uh, one space in between. This can be a block if you use the output that I built here for now. We put a redstone on top, repeater on full delay. We're going to need two temporary blocks to get across here with a sticky piston facing down. Punch out those blocks afterwards, block there and a sticky piston here with a note block on top. Now this is technically optional. I like to put a block on top though because otherwise it'll make some noise. And then we add a uh, observer like this that'll lead into a block when it's pushed. So make sure there's a gap in between and a note block with one, two and one over. So these two face down, this one faces into them. And that is most of the control circuit done. So technically, if you don't need the button and you just want to use the lever, you can just do something like this and add a lever here. But for comp the, the, you know having a complete uh, tutorial, I'm going to do it like this. This block is going to be visible later on. So um, I guess we should maybe use something else like uh, some chiseled quartz. Add that here. But again, this is just cosmetic. You can use any block repeater redstone, redstone, and then the button and the lever. So that will be the input control circuit done. So there's going to be a few more notes regarding this uh, input circuit. Uh, what you can do is test it already. If you press the button, it should give you a single pulse here. If you press the lever, it should also give you a single pulse when you start it. Uh, we did the thing last time where we tested it out. So again, we can do that. Let's add some nether wart and carrots. Uh, nether wart first, then carrot. And as it's brewing, if you press the button, nothing should happen. Same with the lever. So that is, uh, if you want to make sure you build everything right, that is one way to check that. Uh, next, there is one more thing I would like to add. So let me quickly take this out. So we don't need to wait. Uh, I showed you how to build this output. Uh, you can obviously leave it like that. Um, but if you want it in the front, you can punch out these hoppers. Make sure you replace this one with a block and add the comparator on top. Then um, we add a double chest here. The hopper now facing into that with a chest or a barrel on this uh, spot here. That's where that pillar is going to be with hoppers leading into that. And I guess since we're at it, we can also take a, com not a, not a comparator, a composter to decrease the potential for lag. So those are the two options. Uh, I like the other one a bit more, but maybe you want your items easily accessible without building some elaborate tower. So what we're going to do here is uh, once again, reinstate the uh, item output as we had it before through this whole area. Once again, if you're going to do these modifications, make sure you put this comparator back in. And uh, yeah, that is the input circuit. We're going to start with the slices next. And um, yeah, I'll see you then. So let's get going with the slices. For those, we're going to start by putting a single observer here. And uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to show you two designs. Uh, you can choose either of them. They both work pretty much exactly the same. So the first one is going to be the slightly more compact design. For that, we just need a chain of blocks here. These don't need to be quartz, of course, uh, but this is where the levers will go. I'm only going to build two of these. Uh, the reason for that is that the first one needs an observer here, and then you can use both observers or repeaters. I'm going to use repeaters because they're a bit cheaper. What we also need is a piston. So we're going to put that here, a piston for each slice, two blocks there with repeaters going through. So what this will do once we put those two blocks on is it'll extend. So uh, that is uh, one piece of the puzzle. Then we need observers here leading into nothing with a temporary block for now and droppers facing towards the back of the build. And we can already start putting in the hopper chain. So this is the core of the slices. We have the system where if now we send the pulls through, it's going to trigger that dropper and we can test that. 
by pressing the button. Uh, if you have sound, uh, you can hear that it'll do a little, uh, a little click there and it should click twice if you have both of them enabled. As long as there's no items in there, of course. We're gonna fill those up later. So uh, what we can also do now is uh, add glowstone lamps to make it look a bit nicer. So the glowstone lamp down here lights up when we select an ingredient. It's a bit of a quality of life. Uh, we can also add glowstone lamps on top with blocks behind and comparators. Let me quickly get one of those here. So what this does is if you then fill out our ingredients, obviously this is not an ingredient, uh, it'll light up the lamp so it's visible from the front. And that is the slice variation number one. If you, uh, you just repeat that as many times as you want, as many slices as you need, it's 17 for the current full build. Um, you can also use the other design, which I mentioned already. For that one, we're gonna do it a little different. So I'm gonna just move a little over here. The other design needs observers here. You cannot use repeaters because there is air below. So we're gonna start by putting in some observers again with blocks down here. This time it's gonna be two repeaters on each with same set of pistons with again the dropper on top. Important, this shouldn't be a dispenser. Uh, obviously the hopper chain would continue on and then you know you, you do this for every single one of them. And here we're gonna have the controls in the same spot, just one block forward. Again, add the lamps for visibility and you can see that extends the piston. And then we also add lamps uh, above that with another block in between and very easily just, you know, put in two more, or I guess one comparator per slice. That one is once again gonna light up the lamp when we have ingredients in there. And uh, yeah, this one's a bit more elegant. You can put the item frame here. Here, what you would probably do is use uh, quartz stairs, which you can put like this. So that'll make it look pretty nice. Uh, whichever one of these two you build doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Uh, in the end, it's just these three blocks and the one down there that vary. Uh, everything else is gonna be exactly the same. The item filters are gonna feed in here and um, the control is gonna come from this observer here and whether you use observers or these repeaters doesn't matter. So just repeat either this slice or repeat this slice, but make sure that the first one always has the observer. So I'm gonna cut the video here for the moment. I'm gonna finish these slices myself and we're gonna continue on with the next part. All right, so I've done a bit of work off camera and I've built up uh, the second slice design that I've showed you. Again, you can use any of the two. Everything else remains exactly the same. No matter which one you chose, it should look like this. I've also added the composters. Below that is the hopper line. Uh, these composters are not needed. I do recommend placing them there as they will decrease lag, uh, especially if you're on a server, maybe that'll make a difference. So the next question that uh, needs to be answered is how do I configure these? So uh, the first thing you wanna do is add item frames and then add the item that you're gonna fill in a slice and you can then start adding items here in the dropper. If you use the manual refill, as uh, that design shows, you can just come to the back and uh, load these up from behind. If you use the item sorting system, you don't technically need to add any items right now, um, but it might be good for testing. So uh, I'm not gonna do all of these on camera, that's pointless and would take a long time, but I will explain to you the logic that I use. So first of all, we have nether ward, and then all of these effect um, effect ingredients that you add on top of that. Uh, you can leave out any of these. There is only one that is a bit special, which is the turtle helmet, because it doesn't stack. So in order to filter those, we need a different setup. So those are gonna come through here, gonna explain how that is built later. And then we need to feed them all the way to whichever slice has the turtle shells. So there we skip the sorting system and because we would need a very long hopper line if we do it all the way in the back, I strongly recommend if you're gonna build the turtle shell slice, do it as the next one. But you could build it farther back, it's just a longer hopper chain. Everything else here uh, can be in any order you'd like until the fermented spider eye, which again is a, a kind of weird modifier that can corrupt the potion. So I would put that one next and then uh, these three with the dragon's breath very last. And this ensures that you can, as far as I know, brew every single potion in the game. 
uh, and that's the configuration I would choose. So feel free to do it as you'd like. You don't need all of these. You can just go for four if you want. And um, uh, once you are done with that, we can continue on with the build. I figured now would also be a good time to test the system uh, to make sure you've built everything correctly. If you have your ingredients in, technically, this is already everything you need um, if you're gonna do the manual refill of the water bottles and the manual refill of the items. So if I choose these two and press the button, you're gonna see that little red light pop up for a moment on the observer and here it started brewing with the turtle shell next. You can try that with any of your ingredients. Technically, uh, if this is all you need, if you wanna do the manual refill of the water bottles, um, then you can just leave it like this and that's totally fine. It'll work and can always be upgraded later on. However, I do strongly recommend building the uh, water bottle filler. It's a very, very simple addition that'll add a lot to the usability of the system and the convenience that it brings. So we're gonna do that in the next segment. I think now would also be a good time to do a little bit of uh, polishing of the build. So uh, if you wanna go for the same look that I have, uh, I'm not, not much of a builder, but you can already start putting in some wooden posts here. These should be one, two, three, four, five, six blocks high. Uh, if you're gonna build the water bottle filler because we're gonna have a light here later on and then to fill out this area to make it look a bit nicer. You can add blocks of your choice with then stairs on top and upside down stairs on top of that with some more blocks. Uh, maybe also add some blocks of your choice here. But uh, this is obviously not mandatory. I'm just gonna put them in now so we have uh, not just the redstone for the rest of the tutorial showing. So that is um, how you could make it look a little bit nicer. We're gonna start with the water bottle filler in the next short segment. Okay, so now to the water bottle filler, which is probably my favorite part of the whole design. For that, we're gonna need to go up here, put a observer looking into that one there with a block of your choice on top. That will lead into a repeater on full delay, again, into a block with a sticky piston here. We can then put a observer like this and uh, that one's just temporary. We need one more behind that and one like that. So these faces look into each other. Uh, what's gonna happen is when we ever we start the system, it's gonna send a short pulse here that'll be extended and it'll extend this piston just long enough for these to trigger three times, which is exactly the amount we need. So then I will add the um, blocks, two more blocks here like this. And as you can see, because the observer isn't the full block, we can still open this chest to refill the blaze powder later. We then put a repeater with the dispenser here that'll dispense items onto a hopper. In order to make sure those items don't fly all over the place, and we're gonna add a trap door and two pieces of glass. Uh, these don't need to be glass technically if you don't need to refill manually. This one technically can be any block, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use glass for consistency. We then wanna add water to this uh, little spot here. Cap it off with some wool, uh, well, whatever you want basically. Uh, the reason is that sometimes it'll shoot out the items over the trapdoor, so make sure it's capped off by something. Can be a slab, can be a block, whatever you would like. And that is already uh, the whole system set up, except for the glass bottles that we need. So I'm gonna add some of those. Uh, what's very important here is that you fill up this dispenser as much as possible. You should have some glass bottles in every single slot, because if you don't, it's gonna fill this up with water bottles next. So it's gonna dispense one, but put it right back in. So make sure that this is filled as best as possible. Next up, sorry, fell down. We need a hopper in there um, for a bit of extra storage. And for that, we're gonna build a double chest on here. And you can also start filling this up with glass bottles. Now, one more optional thing that I like to add is the indicator for when you start to run out of glass bottles, which is gonna be a comparator out of this double chest with a redstone block that is gonna be fixed to that. And here, a lamp. So what this does is when we run out of glass bottles in this chest, it's gonna turn off this lamp. Uh, you still have a long way to go until all of this is empty, but at least it'll show you, okay, maybe I should fill that up again uh, or put some stuff in the item system if you have that built. 
And uh, yeah, that is the glass bottle filler done. We can test this without actually brewing. So if I press this button, you can see it's happening there. And uh, we have the same amount we had before plus the three extra. If we also choose ingredients and do the same thing again, you can see that here it's gonna stay exactly the same. We don't have any extra here but three were used. So we got three new ones that came into this chest, uh, which are gonna brew the potions that we are currently making. So that is the glass bottle filler. Um, this is effectively the light version of the system. Again, the amount of slices depends on what you've uh, chosen to build. Everything else from now on is just gonna be item handling. So if you don't wanna do that, you can skip the rest of the tutorial. I have a little bit of uh, troubleshooting information at the end that you might wanna watch. Um, I do still think it's worth building the item system, but it can easily be filled manually, especially if you don't make a truckload of potions. If you just dump in a stack, that's gonna last you for a long while. Uh, so stay along for the ride if you wanna see the item managing system. Uh, if that is not something you need, maybe watch the little segment at the end. I'm gonna have a timestamp that will show you what you should do if something goes wrong, um, how you can fix that. Although again, the system's really pretty foolproof. I don't think you're gonna be messing it up too much. So up next, the item filters. I've already done a little bit of work off camera. This is just a hopper facing down with a double chest on each one of these droppers. The next part you're gonna build on every single slice except for the one of the turtle helmet. So I have this one in the second slice uh, as I would recommend you do it if you're gonna build it. Uh, so that one we're gonna skip and you're gonna put on all of these a double hopper like that facing downwards. Well, not a double hopper, two hoppers facing downwards and then another one facing off to the side. That is a, uh, can also be the other direction I think, but I'm just gonna do it like this. And then we're also gonna need a hopper chain that goes all the way across to the end alongside. So next up we need three blocks out from here with a uh, one down there and here and then two blocks. Well, only one per slice. Uh, this is a very typical item sorting mechanism that was I think developed by Impulse SV a long time ago, but still a very useful design. So you saw the repeater I placed there, then we need comparators from the ones that stick out to the side, uh, three dust on each, and redstone torches here and here. Again, leaving out the one that has the turtle helmets. Uh, next up, we're gonna need to configure the filters. For that, you take four of uh, item you're not gonna throw into the sorting system. So I'm using bells. Just uh, for showcase purposes, you can use, for example, renamed dirt or whatever. You can use uh, uh, bells if you want, uh, but uh, I recommend something like maybe renamed sugar cane or whatever, something that is easy to get. Um, and if you rename it, that's gonna make sure the filter doesn't break because if I put bells in here now into the sorting system, then it will break. But first we need to configure the filter. So you just put up to a stack of some item in there. It can be less. It's always gonna go down to 41. If you're gonna put less, then it just has to fill up to 41 first before it can start sorting into the system. So let me just quickly get some golden carrots as I add them in here. And then let's add some nether ward. You will see that the golden carrot gets pushed in here. Here, nothing gets added yet because it still needs to fill up this um, item sorter. But once we hit 41, it's gonna go through and end up in that chest. Uh, next up, we're gonna need one more of these. And that one is just gonna be here where we will also turn the item line that we have on top. So again, make one off to the side and then I'm gonna do something like this, actually like this. That will be the uh, unsorted chest. So whatever doesn't get sorted will go in there. So we do something like that and just add another filter here. Same thing as before. I'm just gonna go through this uh, quickly to not waste your time with the torch last. And that will be for the glass bottle. So again, you would put some bells here or you know whatever item you choose and the glass bottles. And this means that the glass bottles will be sorted automatically. Next, if you do have the turtle shell um, storage, we need to make a, a, a filter for that. Um, so you're gonna do again this thing with one below into a double chest. This one is slightly different. 
I believe at least it's a double chest. Let's see in a moment. Uh, here we're gonna build the same thing as before, but one higher up. So like this uh, with the repeater, dust, torch and comparator. But this time there is no filter or anything we need to configure. What this is gonna do is it's just gonna take anything that is uh, non stackable. So let's just put a few in here and bring it into this double chest. One of them will get stuck here. That's normal, I think, also for these filters. So if you put in five the first time, one of them will be stuck, that's okay. The only problem with this is that uh, it also filters out any non-stackables. So if I put in a bunch of diamond swords, they're gonna end up in here as well, as you can see. So don't put your tools, don't dump your pickaxes into the system, that'll cause it to uh, take those into the turtle shell uh, box. So what we still need to do is route that down there. For that, we need to take a hopper line from the turtle shell chest around under the back, under the bottom, and then bring it into the chest here. And actually, now that I think about it, we should make it like this, because otherwise the redstone block can block that hopper as we are, um, if there are no water bottles and it's retracted. I put composters on top, that's totally optional. Uh, but it will slightly decrease lag. I also recommend building composters on top of this hopper line. So um, that is the whole item sorting system explained. I'm again gonna off camera, uh, do some off camera work, finishing these slices, and then we're gonna start with the item elevator. So let's get started on the elevator. I've put in this little uh, decorative pillar with the chest. I've also extended all of these filters. I haven't configured them as you can see, that's why these aren't lighting up, but you would put your filter items and then the ingredient here according to the slices that you chose. Uh, and this one goes one over all the way to the corner here. And this chest is one, two, three on the fourth block. So uh, when it comes to the item elevator, uh, you can definitely use this design, although I would recommend using something else uh, like a water elevator. Uh, this one's a bit janky, uh, but it does work. So you can use it if you want to. The only important thing is that if you build your own design, make sure that you do not power any of the blocks on this height. So neither here nor here, that can not cause troubles. So uh, if you're gonna follow my build, then you need to build droppers all the way to the top with two blocks below and we're gonna connect that to the chest using hoppers. Next up, a slab. I do believe that could be a block, but I'm not taking any risks with uh, accidentally powering this piston into a sticky piston going off to the side, and then a observer like this that will lead into a note block next to a wool. Well, it doesn't have to be wool. You can choose anything you'd like. So the way this works is once something is in this uh, dropper, it's gonna extend the piston and that will power this note block and make a clock by going one over like that with observer and then down two. Let's fill up this hole again and then just all the way around back here. So we need one observer that faces downwards. So it's pointing the signal into the dropper tower. Then we go two over towards the front and add one more that is looking up. So next, we're gonna have two more observers here, then one facing in that direction. And now we just build a chain all the way up. So that should be four on top of that. And then one, two, three, like this. And I, got, I forgot one. So here will be one more hopper. So this one powers this and uh, I believe this, then this one will power the rest of them, these two, and these will power one of each. So uh, you can fill in all of these blocks. You need these three, I just like to fill them up all so it looks a bit better. Uh, so we can test that out. I'm quickly gonna disable the hopper chain here. Let's just uh, add some red wool. Uh, you might not hear it in the video, but it does a bit of clicking when it starts but eventually it'll be silent whilst it's doing the processing. And once everything has been sent upwards, it's gonna stop clicking again. Uh, well, it's gonna start clicking for a second and then stop. As you can see, the items are being delivered. Um, let me just take out these so we can watch it finish. And you will see that it's reliable, doesn't have anything stuck when it's done. So that is done, bit of clicking happens. And now all the items are up here. See, 64. So that is the whole system done. Um, 
Obviously, you can decorate it as you'd like. One thing I maybe should have mentioned is that these blocks here, if you have very high ceilings, can be something else. As long as they are solid blocks, that is fine. So uh, you, you get to go wild with however you want to um, decorate the whole uh, device. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I have a very short segment at the end that tells you how you can resolve any potential issues, uh, which are rare anyway, but you might want to listen out uh, to how that goes. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, let's do a little bit of uh, troubleshooting advice. So there are essentially two categories of things that can go wrong. The first one is a recipe error. So if you choose a recipe that doesn't work, uh, it'll get stuck in the brewing stand behind. Uh, that can be multiple reasons. Maybe an ingredient isn't in storage. Maybe you didn't build the lamp, so you don't know. Uh, so that could either lead to the wrong potion being brewed. For example, if redstone is missing, it's not going to have the extended duration. Or it could cause the system to not finish brewing at all because the recipe is quote unquote illegal and it's just going to get stuck in the potion brewer. Um, so make sure that you have, first of all, the right recipe selected that you have items in storage for the recipe you selected. And if you still encounter issues, you may have set up these frames improperly. So if the order is wrong, if I were to try Nether Ward, then Redstone, then Turtle Helmet, I believe that will not work, although I haven't tested it, because the order matters and it's going to get stuck. The other thing that can happen is if you press any of the starting inputs, you're going to see that this torch well, right now it won't turn off because we don't have a potion selected, so let me quickly do that. But if I run it with a legal recipe, the torch is going to turn off once both ingredients or the first two ingredients have arrived in the hopper. And this torch is going to stay turned off whilst it's brewing. I can now press the button and nothing will happen because if this isn't powered, it will not start the system. However, until the first two ingredients have arrived, this torch is going to be on still. If you press the button again, it's going to double dispense. And we can actually try that out if you want to. So uh, let's just quickly wait until this is done. So let's give that a quick try. So I'm going to select the recipe. Uh, let's take, for example, this one. I'm going to press the button. And then as you can see, the lamp is still on. Pressing it again. And now we're going to have the problem that we double dispensed items. So we have two nether ward and this is going to get stuck after the first one because I cannot put more nether ward into a awkward potion. You can fix that by taking out the double ingredients or you can just take out everything even whilst it's brewing. That's no problem. It's just going to finish with this clock and then it's going to restart if you have the lever on or you can click to restart it and see like this. We just easily fixed it and it's going to give us our potions of healing in a moment. So those are the main two errors that you can encounter. Make sure you don't spam inputs basically and make sure that whatever recipe you selected is in the correct order with the correct ingredients and with enough of those ingredients. Yeah, and that is basically it. So thank you for sticking through the whole video if you did so. I do appreciate it. I hope it was helpful to you. Again, not much of a YouTuber. Um, I just felt like this design is worth sharing because I think it is a quite useful and uh, compact device that does a lot for you and will probably brew all the potions you ever need. Um, that being said, probably not going to upload more. So please don't subscribe because uh, I'm, I'm really not uh, looking to do more content. However, if you have any issues beyond the ones that I mentioned, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll be glad to, to see if we can work on a fix. And uh, I guess I should add that this build will most likely not work on Bedrock. I haven't tried, uh, but uh, I don't think it will be functional there due to a few mechanics that I don't believe work in Bedrock. So this is Java edition only. It is backwards compatible. I've built the same system already in 1.16 with very few modifications. So you can also build it on older version. As long as you have all the components, it should work just fine. And that's it from me. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.